This episode is dedicated to the most controversial dog breed we have today, and that is the powerful pit bull. There's something about pit bulls, man. They're just so loyal. Banning pit bulls. Pit bulls. Pit bulls. Pit bulls. More precisely, the American pit bull terrier, not to be confused with other bully breeds, such as the American Staffordshire Terrier, the Staffordshire Terrier, the Bull Terrier, the American Bully, or any other bully or pit variation. We, today, are talking about the pit bull. Before we dive into the details of the American Pit Bull Terrier's history and temperament, let's look at some quick facts about this extremely athletic breed. The height at the withers is 18 to 21 inches for males and 17 to 20 inches for females. The weight is 35 to 60 pounds for males and 30 to 50 pounds for females on average. The coat texture is short, smooth, and glossy, and the coat colors is all colors and combinations are permitted by breed standards except for the mural coloring. Life expectancy is anywhere from 11 to 14 years of age. The breed is fairly healthy in general, apart from certain health risks that are typical for medium and large size breeds, such as bloat, hip dysplasia, lymphoma, and other types of cancer, but that, that could happen in any dog. The breed is not recognized in the American Kennel Club, but it is recognized in the UKC, the United Kennel Club. All right, in this section, we're gonna cover the exercise needs of the pit bull. Now, pit bulls are extremely powerful, agile, and energetic dogs that needs plenty of extra exercise and mental stimulation every single day. Unless given the opportunity to release their energy in positive ways, they can turn quite destructive quite quickly. We're talking about chewing your furniture to shreds, digging large holes in your backyard, and even destroying wire crates to bust through and go do whatever it is they wanna do. You name it, they can do it. They have very powerful jaws, but more importantly, that no quit attitude. So these dogs need extremely durable equipment. We're talking about toys that are designed for aggressive chewers. We like Kong balls as our number one choice for dogs that have really strong jaws. When it comes to crates, solid steel crates, such as impact crates, and extra strong leashes and collars to make sure nothing breaks. That plastic nonsense is not gonna work. Now the best way to tire out a pit bull is to combine physical and mental stimulation. Now, structured walks is a great way to start, but even structured leash walks may not necessarily fulfill a pit bull's desire to get out there and play and get that mental craziness out too. Therefore, you wanna combine physical exercise with mental stimulation. We're talking about playing fetch, running off leash with other dogs that they're friends with, play sessions with a flirt pole or spring pole is an amazing idea. Getting a treadmill is also another highly advisable option for pit bulls and any other dog, really. It's an amazing way for them to release that excess energy in a safe environment, especially if it's like raining outside or maybe too cold outside to go for that walk. Great option for them to burn up tons of energy in a safe way. Now, more often than not, we say that a tired dog is a well-behaved house dog and they will be very happy to sleep in their crate or cuddle up on the couch with you after they exerted all of that crazy excess energy and they have no more gas left in the tank. Because of their tendency, potential tendency to attack other dogs and animals if given the chance, pit bulls should not necessarily be walked off leash in public unless perhaps you have mastered the recall and attention healing under very high levels of distraction. But even then, having an e-collar on your dog at all times is always advisable as long as the dog has been properly trained on how to respond to e-collar stimulation. And you, as an owner, know exactly how to use the e collar and have trained your dog appropriately or you and your dog have been trained appropriately on how to use it by a professional dog trainer. Now you have to have excellent control over a dog like this. We're talking about a dog that can easily kill other cats or dogs or even livestock. So coupled with their extreme agility and strength, their prey drive can get them into trouble in a hurry. We're talking about they could jump your fence and start roaming the neighborhood and therefore you could have a pretty big problem on your hands should that happen. We suggest if you are to get a pit bull, you're going to have to get the proper fencing to contain them. Not only high enough to prevent them from jumping or climbing over it, it's also gotta be rooted firmly into the ground. True to their terrier nature, pit bulls are quite effective at getting underneath conventional fences and escaping to go on a stroll through the neighborhood and do who knows what. Hence the very often heard term and used term, loose pit bull. Anyways, that concludes our uh, conversation on exercising your pit bull. Duke Mamba here. In the next section, we're gonna cover something else that's interesting and exciting about the pit bull. Okay, in this section, we are going to cover the amazing history of the American Pit Bull Terrier. The American Pit Bull Terrier has become extremely popular in the United States, and yet this fascinating breed originates all the way back to England. The dramatic history of the pit bull began almost 200 years ago. More precisely, it started in the years following England's ban on blood sports, such as bull and bear baiting in 1835. These cruel contests were extremely popular among the people of Britain. 
and large sums of money changed hands across the betting tables. Bull baiting in which dogs were set upon chained male cattle was particularly popular. There were some mastiffs also involved as canine contestants in these gory competitions, but mostly the competing dogs belonged to an extremely aggressive breed, the infamous Old English Bulldog. Not to be confused with the modern Old English Bulldog, the original Old English Bulldog has become extinct. Once England finally outlawed blood sports in 1835, people turned to ratting instead. Rather than battling bulls and bears in the pits, dogs were now released into pits filled with rats. Whichever dog killed the most rats was declared the winner. Another disturbing practice that came along in these underground arenas was dog fighting, unfortunately. And this is precisely where the word pit bull stems from, a descendant of the old English bulldog, dogs that were fighting rats and other dogs in pits. Unfortunately, it became clear that underground dog fighting was more profitable than ratting. Also, practitioners of this new illegal blood sport discovered the need for smaller, lighter, more agile dogs and less human aggressive than the old English bulldog. They needed to be able to go into the pits and retrieve the dog from after the match without getting bit by them. This is what motivated these breeders to cross the aggressive bulldog with the now extinct Old English Terrier. In the late 19th century, pit bulls entered the United States as companions of British immigrants. They were bred to be fearless in battle, yet docile to humans. These dogs soon sparked the interest of Americans who were interested by their tenacity and farmers used them for herding, livestock protection, and so on and so forth. In 1898, the American Pit Bull Terrier was recognized by the United Kennel Club, which I find to be very interesting because it was originally formulated in England, then came over here to America, named the American Pit Bull Terrier, but the AKC, the American Kennel Club, does not recognize the American Pit Bull Terrier. No, no, the United Kennel Club recognizes the American Pit Bull Terriers. Man, this is a great video on pit bulls. Oh, hey there folks, didn't see you. But now that you're here, actually, is a great time to tell you about our amazing suite of online courses available, you know where, DIYK9.com, where we help you train your dog to be the best that it can be. You are your dog's best trainer. Let's get back to the video. Now that we understand a little bit about the history of the American Pit Bull Terrier, we're now gonna focus our attention on the Pit Bull of today. The American Pit Bull Terrier is mostly kept as a companion dog and family pet. Unfortunately, these powerful canines have been blamed for bite instances more so than any other breed on the planet. This has led to several countries banning the breed or at least restricting ownership. And yet, the American Pit Bull Terrier has a huge community of dedicated fans and owners, both in the United States and other countries. Unfortunately, the numerous bite instances that have occurred over the past handful of decades have left an, a mark on this breed, creating a stigma around this dog that, you know, it's hard to shake. Many people claim that pit bulls should be banned everywhere. And there's this topic or debate going on as we speak in this country and in other countries on whether or not the pit bull should be banned outright. So another 80 year old has been mauled to death by a pit bull. Dogs like these are often misunderstood. This was an unnecessary ban that cost a lot of pit bulls their lives. So this town just passed a measure banning pit bulls. Because of the stigma that surrounds pit bulls in relation to the numerous bite incidents and supposed aggression from the breed. Pit bull owners often suffer from hateful speech or comments from members of the public or even their own family. This can cause significant pressure for them to give up on the dog and put them in shelters. Now, allegedly 15 to 20 percent of dogs in shelters are pit bulls. Now, it's challenging to come up with an accurate number because the definition of the breed is quite broad. 80 percent of pit bulls in shelters are euthanized each year. And simply put, there's just not enough space in these shelters and the adoption rate of pit bulls is significantly lower. We're talking about around 4% adoption rate. So when it comes to whether or not these breeds are right for you, please, please do not rush into getting a pit bull. Also keep in mind that many shelter dogs are riddled with trauma and you know hidden triggers. So even a detailed temperament evaluation by a professional canine behaviorist or dog trainer cannot catch every nuance of a dog's behavior or history. You are taking a very risky gamble on whether you're gonna get the right one. And again, it's not because pit bulls are notoriously mean, it's just if you do have an issue with a pit bull, Lord have mercy, it's, it's an issue. If you get a bad chihuahua, what are they gonna do? Bite your finger? If you get a bad uh, Labrador, it could be kind of mean and ugly. I've never heard of a Labrador killing someone, but pit bulls do have the drive, they have the strength, and that, again, no off switch, that could make it pretty ugly if you happen to get a bad apple. When it comes to the grooming requirements, 
of the Pitbull, because of their short, smooth, and naturally shiny coats, Pitbull Terriers are quite easy to keep clean. They hardly shed throughout the year, and their very short hair acts as a natural repellent to uh, dust and dirt. To keep their coats nice and clean, two to three brushes per week is more than enough, and if they haven't gotten themselves super dirty, you know, digging a hole in your backyard or acting like a lunatic in the dirt, a quick wipe down with a damp washcloth should uh, solve most of your problems. They do not require expensive or extensive grooming tools. You just need a soft bristle brush, uh, maybe a rubber brush, and that's great for removing some of the dead hair from their coat. At the same time, massaging their skin can help bring out that natural oil, and I don't know a pit bull that doesn't like a nice massage, a nice neck massage, head massage, and massaging somebody's uh, strong leg muscles and back muscles. Most dogs love that anyways, but fantastic dogs as far as the grooming standards. They don't require a lot, but they can. As you see, I got a black shirt on. You can get a little bit of that fuzz and dirt on you. It happens with any dog. When it comes to the temperament and trainability of pit bulls, generally speaking, they are sweet and affectionate towards humans. At the same time, the breed is extremely prone or could be prone to animal aggression, particularly dog on dog aggression. After all, the American Pit Bull Terrier was specifically created to destroy rats and to fight and kill other dogs for sport. By means of selective breeding, human aggression has been all but eliminated from the breed, at least to a large degree. And today, pit bulls are known today as their owners and fans as the most loving and affectionate pets. They are smart, eager to please, highly trainable, very intelligent. From my experience training them, they have a naturally high prey drive and social drives, and they come out of the gate full of energy and ready to work. However, it is sometimes difficult to rein in all of that energy and get them to focus on mundane tasks such as extended downstays. That being said, raising and training them requires experience, skill, and consistency and the ability to properly apply brakes to slow that motor down so that they can be calm and compliant when you need them to be. Being such a powerful breed with such a strong prey drive and sometimes that natural propensity for dog or animal aggression, the pit bull needs an experienced and responsible owner that can control them at all times at just the snap of a finger, bring them to a place of compliance and chill the hell out. The United Kennel Club, the UKC, describes the pit bull's temperament as follows, quote, the essential characteristics of the American and pit bull terrier are strength, confidence, and a zest for life. This breed is eager to please and brimming over with enthusiasm. The American pit bull terrier makes excellent family companions and are noted for their love of children. Aggressive behavior towards humans is uncharacteristic of the breed and highly undesirable. In regards to the pit bull's guarding abilities, let us discuss that some bully breeds are very protective and will rigorously protect their family and their homestead from a perceived danger. The American bulldog and the Lapaha Blue Blood Bulldog are excellent examples of this. Even certain bloodlines of the XL American Bully come with natural guarding instincts. The American Pit Bull Terrier, however, is not really known for this. Therefore, Pit Bulls are not classified as, quote, guardian breeds. And yet, just like with the XL American Bully, much depends on the bloodlines. In other words, the genetics of the individual dog. Human aggressive pit bulls are comparatively rare, but they do exist. And when such a dog attacks an intruder, this intruder's life is in serious danger because pit bulls just don't have a give up, turn off switch. Now, I'm not saying that such dogs would ever bite their own family if they come from a sound breeding program. They can be very gentle toward their loved ones, yet fierce and unforgiving towards strangers who enter their territory. But overall, because of the pit bull's history, their genealogy, the selective breeding, they have specifically bred out, or at least attempted to breed out, any natural tendency for human aggression. Therefore, pit bulls don't necessarily come up in my top 10 list of guardian breeds with a natural innate ability to want to bite or attack a human and be a natural protector. Now, again, I'm not saying they can't do it. I'm just saying it's not quite as common as let's say German Shepherd, Cane Corso, Rottweiler, Giant Schnauzer, etc. And now it's time for the dog score. In the category of practicality, we were gonna give the pit bull an eight because seriously, they can do just about anything. They're not too big, they're not too small. You can load them up in the car. You can kind of go here, there, and everywhere with them. The problem is with all the laws coming down and HOA rules and cities and counties banning these dogs all the way back since the 80s, we're gonna have to give them a six when it comes to practicality. In the category of temperament, we'd love to give them a 10 when 
when you get a pit bull that has that amazing temperament, they are a 10 out of 10 all day. However, we gotta look at the whole breed, all of them, and there's a lot of those pit bulls out there that have really high prey drive and that drive to go after other dogs. And for that, we had to deduct three points, so seven is the score. In the category of workability, we give the pit bull a six. They have amazing drive and they can come out of the gate full of piss and vinegar. However, they tend to gas out a little bit quicker than most dogs because they give everything they got. They shoot their whole shot in that first 60 to 90 seconds. Now, that doesn't mean they don't have a lot of stamina. They do, but they tend to gas out, especially in really hot climates. And now it comes to the family category. A little controversial when it comes to the pit bull, but again, when you get a good one, those dogs will love you to the moon and back. But again, with that prey drive and the strength that that dog possesses, it may be a little too much dog for some of the younger folks in your family to walk down the street without getting drugged by the leash if they see a squirrel or they could accidentally bump into and injure a small child, not on purpose. And for that, we don't give them a 10, we give them an eight. In the category of protection, we give the pit bull, drum roll please, a five. Now, why only a five? Yes, they have the looks. Yes, they have the power, but they have been bred since the beginning to not show aggression towards humans. Can you do protection work with them? Absolutely, yes, you can, but they generally speaking do not have the natural genetics to want to bite someone coming into your home that's a threat. They're more than likely gonna lick them. In the category of exercise, we give the pit bull a seven. Absolutely, they're fun dogs to work with, train with, and go out and do a run with you. They can do just about anything, but when you do tire them out, they would love to just lay on the couch and hit that Netflix with you. Plus, that is a dog, unlike many other dogs I've seen, that loves to entertain themselves. Tie a rope to a tree and let them go at it on their own for about an hour and they'll be set. In the category of grooming, we give the pit bull a nine. They don't shed much, their hair's really short, they don't really drool. I mean, they're very, very easy to take care of. So why not give them a 10? That's because the Mexican hairless dog exists and would take that spot. In the category of health, we give the pit bull a solid eight plus. Very healthy dog, very robust, can live a long age. Now with any dog of a medium or a large size, there's gonna be some issues, whether it's genetic or issues like bloat, it's gonna happen in any dog, but overall pit bulls can be very healthy and be very active to an old age. In the category of trainability, we give the pit bull an eight. Now they can literally do anything you want them to do, whether it's a service dog or a couch potato or protection work or agility or really advanced obedience, a pit bull can do it all. However, there are other breeds that exist such as the Belgian Malinois, Dutch Shepherd and working line German Shepherds that are gonna outwork a lot of pit bulls in terms of the ability to train them to a very high level, but man, pit bulls are an amazing dog. Now we've reached the final category of X Factor. For the pit bull, we give it a score of six. Now the reason behind that is they're here, there, and everywhere. Probably in every country across the globe, you're gonna come into some type of pit bull or pit mix, and there's all these different variations of it. So you're not shocked or surprised to see one. You see them everywhere, and often you see dogs that, again, might have a little pit mix in it, or they have cropped ears and are a little muscular, and they get labeled as pits anyway. So when you see one, it's not quite of a wow factor, and so that would give them a very low score. But then again, pit bulls are very much loved by their families. They can be incredibly loyal and amazing family dogs across the board that can do pretty much anything you put them to. So they're incredible dogs and they're a very polarizing dog. You either love them or you're scared of them and hate them. I tend to love them, but at the same time, I respect what they are and what they are capable of doing. And they are hardwired, high drive dogs that demand the right owners to own one. And again, we give them a six, which gives them a grand total of, let me do my calculations here. This gives the pit bull a grand total of 72 out of 100 points. Now that is one of the highest, if not the highest scores we've done in all the breeds that we have reviewed. And it's not surprising because again, the pit bull is a jack of all trades and it's just an amazing dog. When you get the right one, it can be the best dog you ever had. Now, if you wanna find out more about the other breeds that we have reviewed and help you deep dive and determine which is the best dog for you, then please check out our other videos on our channel where we do a deep dive on breeds that you may be interested in. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.